Hey collectors, before we get started with this week's concert poster conversation, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content Go Collect has to offer. Hello, I'm Katie from Go Collect and I'm here with Glenn Troche from the Psychedelic Art Exchange, world renowned concert poster expert, and we're going to talk about this awesome, super rare Bob Dylan poster from 1965. So why don't you just start out by kind of talking about Bob Dylan in 65 and the importance of that. And that was, that was a big year in Dylan history. That was the year that he went from being a folk hero to a rock star. And not all of the fans of folk music appreciated that. Um, this concert happened in what, February of 65. Uh, that was right after he recorded Bringing It All Back Home, which was where he started playing with electric music a little bit. Um, but really, I mean, yeah, uh, 65, Bob Dylan came out electric at, at the Newport Folk Festival, and it, uh, it, was, it, it changed the world. He came out electric, and his fans were not mm, pleased. Yeah, not at first. But then after that, he released Highway 61 Revisited, which is one of the most perfect records ever. So it's a big story. But this was when he was still a folk singer. And I mean, these, this poster is just impossibly rare. I mean, they, they you know, Troy Armory, this is uh, not, yeah. not a big venue. This is not Madison Square Garden. This is, right. I, you know, not many of these exist. And to, this really, yeah, this is just a beautiful piece of cardboard. It was, and it's super authentic. I bought it from the woman that attended the concert and she was on a date. Somebody took her to the show and the story was he pulled it off the wall or whatever and it has the nail holes and rips and all. It's, uh, it's, a, great, <laughs> it's a great piece. This is, I'm, I am honored to be able to be the custodian of something like this. This is, this is deep. This is American history. This is music history this is you know this is a sweet spot and yeah not many of these type of posters exist yeah mm. and do you want to kind of talk about where it falls in the chronology of concert posters um i mean it was obviously before any of the super colorful psychedelic stuff started coming out yeah this was a year before that right so before that. it was printed on cardboard it was printed in limited copies they weren't intended to be saved many of them probably dissolved um yeah i can't imagine more than a handful exist uh, and these type of posters generally don't come up for public sale mostly mm -hmm. privately traded i mean the real real esoteric heavy stuff uh you know it generally doesn't come even to, to public auction right yeah none of it's really too colorful it's mostly just like basic lettering with a headshot or just pictures of the musicians. There's nothing, there's no real like artists working on them yet. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this one, simple but beautiful. And the yeah. whole, the whole cardboard thing has its own aesthetic that's am amazing. The, you know, the rock and roll cardboard, that's a, that's a whole nother topic. I mean, but this is, uh, this is advertising art and this is, this is, it's an amazing that it's survived. Yeah. I like the fact that it has like the pinholes and the stains because you can kind of see where it's been. That's it's, that's you know that's an argument I hear all all the yeah. time that people like that it looks natural. The authenticity of it. And I hear that as an argument for the whole debate about third party certification and grade and all that equals value. Uh, you know, many people tell me I like a poster that looks like it was put up it's mm -hmm. and, and and i agree i mean the aesthetic is is good but you know when you when we talk about value and collecting and it's i mean it's something that when anything hits a certain level value is going to become an important thing it's going to be a way to keep score it's right. uh, you know it, it is where we are now so talking about value what is the value of something like this i mean that's priceless. Uh, I mean, I would say in the realm of, how about this, uh, in, in, in the realm of collectibles where we hear of, what is it, Mike Trout rookie cards selling for mm -hmm. 3.2 million or something? Is that 
Do I have that? I mean, that's that sounds right to me. That's mind blowing to me. This and that this. I mean, this is probably a fifty thousand dollar poster. I mean, that's like nothing in the world of collectibles. This should be. I mean, this is Smithsonian material. This is this is every bit of everything. I'm, and this was the start of all of that culture. This is 65 and the, you know, the 60s culture began from here. This was, Bob Dylan was a folk singer, a protest singer at some point. And this was Vietnam War. This was the first you know, generation of youth that were making noise about social issues in a big way. Yeah. So if someone wanted to get their hands on one of these, would that even be possible? I mean, I don't, or do you I, just I, have to like know someone that had one that didn't really know what you it know, was like, I, you know, like I, it. I, don't, I don't I maybe know of one or two other copies but like I say these are held by the top collectors they're traded privately I, it's hard to tell what's out there in uh -huh. in early Dylan because they're so tightly held they haven't come to market yet but when they do I can't you know imagine what results they'll get I mean this is like like early Beatles early Dylan early stones all that really early stuff 65 and before rock and roll that's uh, that's that's the that's the tip of the pyramid that's gold dylan is a thread that runs through everything <sighs> he's on posters like this he's on psychedelic posters he's still on posters today well he's you know in many ways larger than life uh mm -hmm. it's not hyperbole at least in my opinion to say that yeah, he's the greatest song writer of the 20th century. Is that a stretch? I, I think that would I mean, be that's, I mean, that, maybe it's hyperbole, but that's like, people. that's, I mean, Dylan's so important in so many ways. Yeah. He really, uh, but he's, you know, he, he, he changed music. The Beatles changed music and they kind of riffed off of one another. They right. had, there was a whole thing yeah. with John Lennon and Bob Dylan. Yeah, they had they had a sort of friendly competition, from what I understand. You know, so you know the uh, and they had a relationship. You know that uh, you know according to legend or no, I mean it's documented. You know, Dylan turned the Beatles on to marijuana. So yeah, well marijuana. documented. Exhibit <laughs> A. Um, but uh, yeah, and 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 at, so right after this show, he Dylan did a European tour where I think the Beatles saw him at Royal Albert Hall. I'm I, I believe I have my facts right there. Yeah. And Dylan and the Beatles, that was that was the food for for the for all this. That was you know, that's they they were channeling from another place. I don't know that I mean Dylan's impact is it's hard to define. It, it but he and he's just larger than life. And he's still Playing today. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he just put out a new album not yeah, that long ago. Yeah, he's still relevant. I mean, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, he's just always been there throughout all of modern music history. And he's taken on so many different faces too. I mean, he's you know, he was the protest singer, and then you know, he's a real iconoclast, but a mystery. He's just that uh, kind of. He really is. I mean, yeah, I cannot say enough. I you know, I'm not able to really you know uh, do justice here right so in terms of collecting Bob Dylan posters are there any others that are like really key to building up a strong collection I mean Dylan posters mm -hmm. that's an interesting question really it's this early stuff that that it's before he went electric that that's you know that's the rare stuff that's really after that point, see, here's the thing. At a certain point, when a performer becomes larger than life like that, they don't really need... Right. He, the, the, need the, he didn't need the press. I mean, it was uh, like... I, you know, I'd have, to, I'd have to think that through. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's really... It's, it's 63, 64, 65. That's... It's, right, yeah, before it's, all the explosion. You know, he was writing history. Uh, you know, and then in 66, he had his motorcycle accident, so he was off for a while and then didn't tour for a while. Um, you know, it's, it's yeah, early Cardboard Dylan is impossibly rare and important in every way. All right, well, that's really cool to learn about. If you learned anything cool or if you have any cool Dylan posters or anything to add, feel free to drop a comment um, in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.
And that's all we've got for you today. Please let us know in the comments what your favorite thing that you took away was. And thanks so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this concert poster conversation with Glenn. Make sure to tune in every other Monday for new videos, and we'll see you soon.